Hello everyone and welcome back to the first plugin review we have done in quite a while. I apologize for the delay. Today we are checking out Featherboard. Um, this is a scoreboard plugin which adds a scoreboard to your Minecraft server. Just like this you can see in game here. Um, so we're going to go over all of the default stuff that they have in their configure files. We're going to go over the commands, the permissions, the placeholders, the effects. Um, I'm going to avoid other than a quick dive into the developer API and effects a little less than the rest of the plugin. I will let you figure that out for yourself. This is a paid plugin, but it is available over on Spigot, linked in the description. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe. We've got lots of cool content coming out over the next couple of weeks. So why don't we go over the main page and then we will dive into the configuration, the commands, permissions, etc. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so Featherboard, it adds a bunch of um, the ability to use a very cool scoreboard. So you have like scrolling news, you can put all your placeholders from placeholder API in it. You have a bunch of different stuff and it's very well performance. So here's a performance test um, that they did. It has a bunch of rainbow colors moving and it is not having a drop in the RAM usage or anything for the plugin, which is really awesome indeed. Um, it works alongside Animated Names, which is another plugin by this author. Um, it works really well with all of different plugins, all that good stuff. So let's go over the features and have animation. They have an animation creator, um, which you can download and run if you want. Um, if you want to create cool animations for your scoreboard, go ahead. It has a bunch of character support for versions 1.13 and higher. So you can have more than um, the default 1.8 scoreboards do. It does support 1.7 through 1.18. According to the resource page, um, but make sure to just keep up to date and ask the author in the discussion tab if you have any questions about any of that. Um, it, it supports other stuff, so MCMMO, health bar, citizens, all that good stuff. It doesn't have any flicker, no lag. Um, you have all that good stuff. You can hide lines during the animation so you can get rid of a little part of it. Vent triggered if you want to use the API. Uh, you can toggle um, the boards on and off as a player so you don't actually have to see it all the time if you want to do that, or you can. Um, obviously configure it for worlds or uh, permissions or groups and you can have multiple scoreboards based on what's going on in game so like you can have a scoreboard if you kill an animal it will switch to mcmmo level up scoreboard all that cool stuff so you can have all of that really nice stuff um the server type of uh requirements and properties can be found here so you can see um what versions the anti-flicker stuff is working on um what the title length and everything is allowed so Feel free to look this over, make sure it fits your needs for your server, because obviously it's different between versions from 1.7 to 1.18. Um, all that good stuff. Just make sure you're running on a newer Java version, which is really cool indeed. And the only dependency is placeholder API. If you don't know what placeholder API is, it adds all of the placeholders for a bunch of expansions across a bunch of stuff. So make sure um, you go ahead and get that installed before it is that is free optional um, updater for updating if you need this um, so there you go the only limitation is the red numbers on the right hand side that is a client limitation nothing the server can do about that um, so then it goes over kind of changing all the stuff in here and you can go ahead and do that because you can change the numbers on the right hand side to not be one two three four five or whatever you can actually have a custom number and they go over how to do that there um, so why don't we hop to the configure file? Um, there's a lot of stuff here, um, and you can see it goes over a bunch of stuff. The default configs are available over here on the wiki. Um, you can find the wiki link from the main page of the resource, um, and it goes through all of this. So you can go through all this and enter and read over all of it. We're just going to go ahead and look at the um, default config in our YML files in a moment, but you can see here's the example of the animation creator. If you want to use that as well, it is a separate download. Obviously, you can find it over on Spigot as well. Um, link from there. Let's go over some of the commands and permissions before we dive into the configs. All right, so the con um, commands cannot speak today, apparently. We have Featherboard Help, which shows all of the commands in the plugin. We can look at that in game in a minute. About displays your version information and everything. Reload, obviously. Reloads the plugin configure file so you don't have to restart the server. But restarting is always preferable for all plugins across uh, Spigot. So make sure you restart if you can. Uh, debug will let um, a paste be sent so you can give it to their support team if you need to. Um, you can do Featherboard permissions to see if you have access to the permissions that you have. Featherboard placeholders show, hide, toggle, on and off if you want to turn on and off the scoreboard. 
Um, and you can also do a create scoreboard in game using uh, command line stuff. I would avoid this. I would just use your configure files if I'm you. Um, you can obviously remove, edit, and um, look at the different modules available for download within the game. And then the permissions all can be found here for those commands. I won't go through them because they're really not that big of a deal. I'm going to be opt in game, so we don't have to worry about those at all. Um, we already went over the placeholders are all available with placeholder API. You can look through all of these, but there is plenty that you have and can use. Um, so I do recommend looking through this. We'll take a quick look at the API now. So they have a general API for get scoreboard is toggle, toggle, etc. So if you want to make like a custom item that toggles it, you can do that as well. You have a last version check updates, show hydra scoreboards, etc. All that stuff can be available in here. And then you also have the placeholder API update um, you can use that um, to whatever you want so the api for placeholder api you can use wherever you want if you want to use those placeholders or whatever you want to do so you can look here and find all of the effects that you can do inside of some of the stuff so you have gradients for those rgb gradients in 1.16 i think and higher um, you have multiply you can do um, has permissions so you can check if someone has permission if they don't they will return a different thing you can fade in fade out glow you have the um, moving top like um, animation, which we'll take a look at it in a minute like this. So you can see it changes um, the colors and moves us through and all that. Rainbow scroll effect, um, scroll effect being the thing that's scrolling on the news here. Upside down text. Um, you can do a JavaScript tag, which is pretty cool. And you can use like math uh, times, etc. If you know what you're doing with that, you don't have to use it, obviously. You got center to center the text in the middle, URLs. All that good stuff can be found in here. There's so many different effects. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, but let's go ahead and hop in game and check out the default scoreboard. So this is the default scoreboard you get when you are in game. And what I have to do and what everybody will have to do when they first get in game, if you want to use the default scoreboard for any reason, make sure you do um, and insert your placeholder API server and player expansions and then reload that because the scoreboard by default uses those. Um, you can do that by pap, uh, placeholder API or Pappy eCloud download server and Layer. So you can do that pretty easily there. Um, but by default, you can see the player info is my username, what my uh, latency is, and then the news it has different lines scrolling through there. The site is the default site, and the server info shows the RAM and the online players, which is pretty cool. Now, if we hop into the Featherboard um, configure files, the main configure file will go ahead and go through different um, requirements. So you have what version of the configure on. Don't edit this, you don't need to do that. If you want to enable debug mode, logging, all that good stuff. If you want to use a database like MySQL or something or um, along those lines, you can uh, to sync between servers, but by default it uses SQLite, which doesn't require any database inserting or anything like that. Um, you can have the GUI. So if you want to have an in-game GUI or something like that, you can have placeholders, auto downloads, you can tweak different stuff about the plugin, the show delay when you join, the um, updating, how often it updates, what method you're using to update, all that good stuff can be configured in the main configuration file for the plugin. But what you are all looking for, other than the language, if you want to edit any language, it's in lang.yml. But if you want to go to the scoreboards and go to default, this is where you're actually going to be able to find this scoreboard. So if you scroll down, you can see every line, title, frame. So by default, here is how the animation works for that featherboard right at the beginning. You can see it changes the color codes each time it goes through and delays every time. So it goes twice through and then it will do that colors. Uh, you have the frames, so you can see the rainbow frames and everything. Very cool. Those are all those types of things. And then you have like player line one, player name, local display name. So that would be the first line here on our server, which displays where you're from, what your language is, and your player name. Then as we continue through here, player line two shows the latency. So that's right below there. You have a spacer, which the spacer is literally just the space between here and then the news. So why don't we try changing something in here? Let's do this. So why don't we change this news to attention? Subscribe to BGHD development on YouTube, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and save this. In the end game, we're going to do featherboard reload. And then it's going to take a minute because the reloading does take a minute. And then once it is ready, it's going to pop back up there and it says subscribe to BGHD development on YouTube. We have just changed that animation, which is pretty cool. And obviously, if you want a secondary news source, you can add a second one here. And then I can say attention. 
uh, join our Discord or something like that. And then if I reload again, it's going to scroll through those two um, to get there. And you can enable an option to have it random or you can do it in order. So you can see there's the, it's going to say attention, join our Discord. And then it's going to say subscribe to BGHD development on YouTube. So you can change those up um, however you want, which is very cool. All right. Otherwise, let's do this. We have another spacer and then we have the server info. So you have the site. Ah, here's the site. So you have the site and then it changes to the health and then it changes to the health bar default. So you can see it actually changes both the text right here and the bottom here. So you just change this up here for the first one and then that's the site. And then if we change the site to ours, so we do bghdevelopment.com. And instead of like, what, what do we see here? Instead of how long I've played or anything, why don't we go ahead and say, what, what should we make it? Uh, videos uploaded or something. And then I can change this down here to how many times I've uploaded. So we have like 800 videos. Uh, or I think we're closer to 1,000 videos now on the channel. So I can go ahead and change that. And then finally at the bottom, you can see it has a TPS and everything. I'm going to just leave that alone. And the footer, which is the rainbow, which is this right here. Um, so now if I go in game and reload the plugin, you can see that this all this info is going to change once it loads up. And you can obviously look at console for the um, way it's loading up and everything. So once we are in here and it is loaded up successfully, you can see now our health works, our site now says BGH development. And once it cycles once more, we should see that it says videos uploaded a thousand. There we go. We are done. We have successfully created our scoreboard and edited it to our liking. Um, so that is pretty much all the coverage I'm going to go into. There's not much more. You can configure it to your liking. You can change it around. Um, I think it's just a really cool plugin, and I hope you do enjoy it if you use it yourself as well. Um, if you need support for it, they recommend doing the discussion section or the plugin help support forum on Spigot. Um, and hopefully you did enjoy. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what plugin you want to see next. Our next plugin review will be mid-May, so keep that in mind. But let me know what you want to see next, and I will work on it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video in a couple of days. Bye, everyone.